Having served on um, the Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee for 13 years, and a part of those years as a ranking member of the Transportation Bonding Committee, and also having served as ranking member of the Transportation Committee for nine years, I've had some opportunity to learn a little bit about the funding uh, for transportation projects throughout the state of Connecticut uh, through that experience. Um, and, and I also understand that the department uh, does establish priorities, uh, some of which is based on available funding, and some of that available funding is based on what we as a legislature provide and then is often contributed to by the federal government. As I interpret your intent in the reestablishment of tolls, to reimburse the state of Connecticut, it would seem to me that it would still have an impact on how a project is prioritized as far as the, the state of Connecticut through the Department of Transportation fronting the funding to construct a highway that is estimated to cost $1 billion before we get any of that back through some unknown years of the collection of toll revenue by the volume of cars that you've identified you anticipate will be driving through there. Um, would, through you, Madam Speaker, would you expect that um, by granting the Department of Transportation the authority to implement tolls for the stretch of Route 11 expansion in southeastern Connecticut that that would further prioritize this project above all of the others in the state of Connecticut and therefore identify the necessary funding that would be fronted by the state of Connecticut um, in order to complete the project to then implement the tolls and then begin receiving some unknown years of revenue to pay back with interest the bonds that would be issued in order to pay for the construction of that project. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Tutilla. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the uh, Route 11 project uh, already has uh, been given a high priority as a matter of public policy through uh, bills passed here in this legislature in previous years. Uh, it had been on uh, a high priority list uh, consistently by the, the Transportation Strategy Board and uh, the uh, major obstacle that was presented a year ago was funding. So I'm here trying to uh, get, get some action on this and, and frankly that's the purpose of this bill to uh, say to uh, those who are trying to figure out a way to complete this high priority project that this legislature says that there is a mechanism for funding here that we're prepared to make available that can be part of the mix should DOT choose to use it in its financing plan. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Scrigner. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It, it seems to me that uh, for, especially in this day and age where funding is very um, scarce and hard to come by, there's a lot of uncertainties about the ongoing flow of any funding coming for transportation purchases to the state of Connecticut, that this is a, a very significant commitment for us to make with a lot of unanswered questions. And I would tell you that from my own experience, and I have spoken with a number of the legislators in particular from the southeastern area of the state, and I've listened to considerable testimony by themselves as well as some that have come to speak on behalf of the expansion of Route 11, uh, I, I can feel uh, that concern greatly. I had a similar situation in my area of the state uh, and, and had to commit a tremendous amount of time to uh, get a project uh, through the permitting process and also to get funding committed in a very competitive environment. 
that particular project, similar to this one, uh, it took 30 years from where it was concluded at the original cost of $1 million to expand it an additional $2.9 million a couple of years ago. And the cost of that project was $125 million. Um, and, and that was because of that 30-year gap and what had happened beyond. Um, and, and so I do understand, and I have publicly stated that I would be happy to work with members of the Southeastern Connecticut delegation to assist in prioritizing and making whatever commitments necessary to get that project forward, because I think they made some compelling arguments about the necessity and need for it to happen. And certainly the most compelling of all were some of the safety issues that were addressed. And I applaud them for bringing that information forward for our consideration. But I have to say in listening to uh, some fair level of debate, first in the Transportation Committee, secondly in the Finance Committee, and now here on the floor of the House, I'm very concerned about the number of unanswered questions that remain for what is going to become uh, a statewide policy and practice change in how we potentially fund road improvements here in the state of Connecticut. Because this paragraph that is a piece of legislation before us may have been amended in the Finance Committee to identify Route 11 as the recipient of toll revenue, but logic would tell you that once you allow that to move forward, we're going to see others who have very compelling stories and very necessary projects that they want prioritized, they want funding for, come forward. And I think that this is a time for us to look at and receive much more significant, accurate information before we make that kind of a broad policy change here in the state of Connecticut that was adopted by this legislature 28 years ago.